Hi everyone. Had a pleasant surprise the other day. Received from eBay. A very nice little phone. Um, it came from over here actually. You see by the plug it was um, intended to be um, recon no what's the word I'm after. Someone's had a go at it and put on a plug for the English market which was handy because it meant I just, just plugged it in and um, it worked. But the main reason for these phones is they're all slightly different and my interest is really not in the colour of the phones. Um, it's in the fact they're quite old. This one's possibly uh, 1940s, 1950s. It's um, a KTAS, that's the, uh, the Copenhagen uh, uh, Telephone Authority. Tell by the numbers that it's um, definitely Danish. And the shape, well they made I believe three different types of these with a very similar shape. I thought I was actually getting um, one of a different number made by Christian Kirks but more pleased to get this one because it's made by Automatic, a very well known name in telephones. Um, it's according to the circuit diagram and yes there is one inside which I'll show you. It's um, F62. Now the little uh, little read up I had about it was they made an M52 but this is definitely F52 and it's printed on the piece of paper with the circuit so um, it makes you think. Now then I'm going to pop the top off in fact it's virtually off now I've shown it like that we're going to have a little look inside. Uh, the handset I'm hoping I've got it round the right way I probably haven't Now I've got it round the right way. It's got the name of it. And their trademark was obviously that little symbol in there. At first when I saw this phone I thought, oh, they've changed the handset. And I thought, oh, why'd they do that? Which ha happens some, sometimes. But then I opened up the phone case and always have a look inside the case you never know often you'll get a little circuit diagram either as a folded diagram a piece of paper uh, which is placed inside the phone itself or it's stuck onto the back of the case inside the case and there's the thing I'm going to try and make it a bit easier to see move that along I've got this other light which is handy because I'm ha having difficulty seeing things as, as I stated before um, no that can be seen like that that light there make it a bit clearer there's the circuit diagram so I was well pleased to get that and on the left hand side it's got the number of the phone. I'm hoping that shows up. I think it says F62. Anyhow you've got a full circuit diagram there which is always handy. You never know when you may need to call on a diagram and as this diagram will appear on YouTube hopefully it will be of use to 
anyone else who has one of these phones to be able to fault find. It's a Bakelite case in excellent condition and I will say um, when I got this phone I ordered it I said to the seller I said oh, can you make sure it's really well wrapped up and padded well and keep the handset away from actually touching the case because they can shake it in transit and perhaps do a bit of damage anyhow this comes superbly wrapped it was padded the phone itself was double boxed the handset was between the two so there was no way there was going to be any contact with touching the post and uh, as I said before the actual package you could have virtually kicked it around the room without any damage being done to the phone and I'm very very pleased um, I did say this would be appearing on YouTube and um, I'm doing it now it actually arrived yesterday uh, the reason I haven't given an answer yet is because I was tied up with um, uh, other things not beyond my control but um, it's, it had to be done so unfortunately I didn't get down to it anyhow let's have a little look at the phone itself now we can take the dial off just twisting and gently lifting away we'll have a look at the dial it is um, different to any dial I've seen um, I must admit I was expecting to find the slipping cam type dial as fitted to my other KTAS but it's not it's obviously one by automatic um, but thinking back all the automatic dial used in America is, is in fact different to this one the only similarity is to the Western electric dial with the regulator there but the contacts making and breaking are done in there uh, which is more like the continental type so it's it's like a, a sort of a mix between the two anyway well made um, looks pretty strong very quick release as you see it's held in by there's two little holes there which marry up to these pins here and there so it's quick then. the wire is hard drawn wire so it's not flexible so my advice would be to not keep taking it out lots of times because it could fatigue and break the actual wire uh, the connections are by screws which you can just see and that would come out as a whole undo the four screws and that would come out they're obviously for your impulse springs now the impulse springs I already said is that set there and your dial off normals is that one there um, not much more can be said about it there's no name on it at all um, surprised about that I thought there would have been but there isn't so I'm presuming it's an automatic dial that's automatic to the KTAS looking at the rest of the phone you've got your bell gongs there now this bell needs adjustment so after I've done the, uh, this video I'm going to have to adjust it because at the moment the that side's okay you go the other side it's miles away from the hammer so I have to, as far as I know it's by loosening off the centre nut which you can see there and twisting the gong round to make it hit and, and strike that so 
that's something to have a little look at. It's, I think it's well made, very strongly made. These are the, are the cradle contacts. Um, you've got two capacitors, one for the, the bell circuit and the other one possibly as a spark quench for the dial. They did use these in, in some places. Sometimes it's like two capacitors in one, but this case it is two separate capacitors. You've got your contacts at the back. This little arrangement here, I think might have been added as an extra. I don't know, I'm not touching it, I shall leave it in. The reason being the transmitter in the receiver it looks like it's one of these uh, electronic ones which has obviously been fitted many years after this phone was made. In fact the transmission is very very good so there's no problem there. So all in all a very nice well made phone. The reduce the sound of the bell is on these on that little contraption there which I'll show you what it's what it's like on the other side because I'll turn this over and we'll have a look the anti side tone coil you can see it is that coil there at the back almost hidden but it's there and as I say these the wiring on this side is for your handset and on this side is for the line cord which has been changed to a British one. They've done a good job actually. Um, the only thing which needs looking at is that bell as I say. But apart from that it is very very good. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to place the dial back in because I want to turn the actual phone over. There's the side of the dial before I put it in. That's the regulator. The gearing is nice. They're nice metal gears as opposed to plastic or fibre. Your spring sets as, as I stated. But there's no name on it. I'm, I'm surprised about that. Let's pop this oh, get around the right way. Goes in and a twist. In, twist. And that's in and locked. Now we'll turn the phone over so we'll have a little look at the, the base. Now you'll notice that some of the little rubber feet have gone and in fact these two rubber feet will be taken out as well to be replaced uh, through age they have worn out. So we can change that. Now the Copenhagen telephone action however you pronounce that see that on a phone you know it's a, a KTAS phone also I think I can show it I don't know if it'll come up very well I like to put everything in that I can but I don't know if this is going to show up Where is it? I can't even find it now. There we are. There's a little motif there which has the manufacturer's name on there, automatic, and Copenhagen. 
and a picture of an antique phone and handset which is quite nice over to the left hand side you've got the regulator for the bell loud ring or a soft ring and that will be working once I've adjusted the gong held in by two screws the screws go into plastic or, or Bakelite so as they're not and I can show you this see they they're plastic or well not plastic although Bakelite's a form of plastic so with great care sometimes they're in they're in setted with brass so the actual screw part is brass set in the in it but this isn't so that means great care when putting it together don't over tighten it and don't get it cross threaded that way it'll, it'll last you a long long time I've noticed there's some numbers on here now I don't know what these numbers mean it looks like it says F3 F3 or R3 or P3 even I think it's F3 there's another funny thing down there as well I might see it better once I play this back anyhow that's the the actual base and I think I've said all, all I've got to say about this phone I am quite pleased that I got it and I should be sending a nice feedback to the gentleman who sold it to me in interest it was obviously it was sold over here which is good because you, you haven't got high postage it had um, a lead with the English type plug on it so it was obviously had been used over here and um, as I say I'm well pleased to get it so once again thanks for watching any comments please make um, please like please subscribe all the things you do on youtube and i'll get back to you very soon on something about a journal which i've just received for uh, the cactus lovers who are also subscribed to me so i shall be pleasing hopefully both sides Anyhow, once again, thanks again, and as I'll see you a bit later with the, uh, the bulletin of the Mesem study group. Thank you.